Hello everyone and welcome to Missouri River Detectives. A question that we're often asked when we take students on the river is, are there sharks in the Missouri River? If you Google sharks in rivers, you may see some articles and headlines like this one. This is a story about a man finding a shark in the Osage River, which is just below Jefferson City, Missouri. Have you ever heard about someone catching a shark in the river? It can seem convincing, but when looking for the original source, most of the articles and new sites linked back to each other. Further inspection reveals that this story was a hoax. Reliable sources are very important when it comes to being Missouri River detectives. Here's another well-known river shark story. Look and see when this article was published. Yep, that's right. It was published on April 1st, as in April Fool's joke. The author even included a note at the end of the article as pictured here. When asked the question of whether or not there are sharks in the Missouri River, many people think of these fictional stories. They do not have reliable sources and are not able to provide a scientific explanation for why sharks might be in the Missouri River beyond these joke articles. Before we address the question of whether or not there are sharks in the Missouri River, we need to know how to form a scientific explanation. Scientific explanations start with a claim, which is what you think. A claim is a statement that can be supported or not supported by evidence. It is not a personal opinion, such as pepperoni pizza is better than mushroom pizza. The evidence that supports this claim is all of the data and the observations that make you think the claim is true. Reasoning connects the claim and evidence together and justifies why the evidence is related to the claim. It is the reason why this makes sense. Reasoning often makes an argument stronger and more easily understood. When you combine your claim, evidence, and reasoning, it adds up to be a scientific explanation. As for sharks in the river, first we must make a claim. Our claim is that sharks do not live in the Missouri River. Next, we must take a look at our evidence and our reasoning. Most of these stories reference a very specific type of shark, the bull shark. So, is it even possible for a bull shark to live in the Missouri River? Let's check out some bull shark facts. What do we know about bull sharks? The reason many of these stories use a bull shark is that they are a species of shark that can survive in fresh water. Most shark species can only live in salty ocean water, so it would be impossible for them to survive in the fresh water of the Missouri River. Another reason that so many of these stories use a bull shark is that one was reportedly found in the Mississippi River in 1937 near Alton, Illinois. Alton, Illinois is just north of St. Louis, Missouri. How would a bull shark have gotten all the way to Alton, Illinois in 1937? Let's take a look at the known location of bull sharks around North America. Bull sharks prefer warm, shallow waters along the coast. The highlighted red area shows regions where bull sharks can be found. For a bull shark to end up in Illinois, they would most likely have to swim all the way up the Mississippi River, starting down here in the Gulf of Mexico. If we think back to our question, we are looking into whether or not there are bull sharks in the Missouri River. The Missouri River starts here and travels all the way to the Mississippi River here, ending in St. Louis. It's really far away from any warm coastlines. One could say that bull sharks are adapted to living along coastlines in the ocean. Adaptations are helpful physical or behavioral traits that make it easier for an animal to survive in a specific habitat. We're going to compare and contrast some of the adaptations that fish who live in the Missouri River and the bull shark possess that make them well suited for their habitat. One body part that we will be focusing on is the mouth. Fish mouths determine how a fish eats, where a fish eats, and what a fish eats. We will also be looking at how they respond to different water temperatures. 
The key to being a Missouri River detective means being organized. Follow along as we study each of these mouth types. Then we'll be able to investigate the Missouri River fish that we know have these mouth types. First of all, sucker mouths are adapted to suctioning algae and small creatures off of rocks for food. They're often referred to as bottom feeders, as they can be found at the bottom of rivers and lakes. Clamper mouths are adapted to clamping their mouth down on small fish. These mouths often have teeth that trap or bite into the prey. Normally, their bottom jaw is the only part that moves to clamp onto smaller fish that can be swallowed. Filter feeder mouths are adapted to filter tiny pieces of food, such as plankton, out of the water. These fish often swim around with a wide open mouth in order to filter as much water as possible. We're going to be looking at some really neat fish, like the smallmouth buffalo, the paddlefish, the blue catfish, the alligator gar, and the pallid sturgeon. Each of these river fish have very different looking mouths, which makes it fun to compare them. Here's the mouth of the smallmouth buffalo. What do you notice? Are there teeth? The smallmouth buffalo has a sucker mouth. It suctions its lips to a hard surface in order to eat algae and small organisms. Next is the paddlefish. Take a look at its face. Can you guess how it got its name? Which mouth type requires the fish's mouth to be wide open? The paddlefish has a filter feeder mouth. A lot of people don't know that blue catfish have teeth and often eat smaller fish. What type of mouth could it have? That's right, a clamper mouth. What about the alligator gar? Take a look at that fish mouth. Alligator gars also have clamper mouths. With teeth like those, I don't think many fishies would be able to escape. Finally, what type of mouth does a pallid sturgeon have? It can be hard to tell. I don't see any teeth and their mouths are on the underside of their body, so it would be difficult to be a filter feeder. Pallid sturgeon have a sucker mouth. The location of the mouth on the underside of the body makes it perfect for bottom feeding. So what about the bull shark? Which of the three mouth types that we've talked about does a bull shark's mouth most closely resemble? Do bull sharks have teeth? What do they eat? Is it possible that a bull shark has a different mouth type altogether? Here's an up-close picture of a bull shark's mouth. I'll bet you were thinking clamper mouth. And you'd be right in thinking that a bull shark's mouth looks most similar to the clampers of the Missouri River. The big teeth and jaws waiting to catch some prey. But there are some differences between a bull shark's mouth and our Missouri River clamper mouths. Unlike the Missouri River clampers, who can only move their bottom jaw to clamp down on the prey, bull sharks are able to move both their top and bottom jaws. This allows them to grab prey, which can be much larger than the shark, and tear off a bite. Speaking of prey and predator, how does the difference between mouth types determine interactions between fish in the water? The type of mouth a fish has determines where it exists in a food web. A food web shows us what something eats. It can be a very detailed food web or a simple one with only a few animals. Here's an example of a food web starting with a small crayfish. Fish with sucker mouths, like the smallmouth buffalo, feed on small crayfish and algae on the bottom of rivers. Blue catfish prefer large, fast-moving rivers and have clampers that allow them to grab onto smaller prey and trap them. The alligator gar also uses clampers to catch smaller fish, and even birds. This means that the alligator gar can not only eat the blue catfish, but any small fish that can be caught in its teeth, including smallmouth buffalo. Much like the alligator gar and the blue catfish, bull sharks are top predators in their habitat. 
Their prey often consists of bony fish, dolphins, sea turtles, other sharks, and schooling fish like the ones pictured here. Unlike the Missouri River clampers who prey on small fish, bull sharks are used to eating larger prey, which are plentiful in the coastal waters, but harder to come by in freshwater rivers. If a bull shark swam up from the Gulf of Mexico, they would have to work harder, sniffing out enough prey in the fast-moving currents of the Missouri River compared to the more bountiful, shallow coastlines. Draw a picture of a fish that you think might live in the Missouri River. Include what you learned about fish mouths and draw which type of mouth this fish has. All the fish that we've talked about today typically live in one of these two locations, the Missouri River or the ocean. Fish like the pallid sturgeon, alligator gar, smallmouth buffalo, paddlefish, and blue catfish all can be found in the fast-moving Missouri River. Meanwhile, bull sharks are normally found in the ocean in shallow waters with gentle currents. Think about each location. What do you notice about the habitat of these fish? Think about the climate and the weather. What happens to the Missouri River that doesn't happen to warm coastal oceans? That's right. The waters of the Missouri River can get cold and even begin to freeze. This is what the Missouri River looks like during the winter months. Brrr. Our local fish are adapted to surviving these seasonal temperature changes, ranging from freezing to warm. Many of them become less active during winter months in order to save up just enough energy to maintain a livable body temperature. Bull sharks, on the other hand, are only found in waters with a temperature of 68 degrees Fahrenheit and above. The Missouri River only reaches these high temperatures during the summer months before plummeting down into the 30s during late fall and winter months. These temperatures are deadly to tropical fish. Would a river with noticeably changing seasons be a good place for a bull shark to live? Now it's time to use our claim, evidence, and reasoning to come up with an explanation to the question, are there sharks in the Missouri River? Use your best Missouri River detective skills to come up with your explanation. Next time you hear people ask if there are sharks in the Missouri River, you can use this explanation to tell them why they're not. Thank you all for joining Missouri River Relief on this investigation into whether or not there are sharks in the Missouri River. You're well on your way to becoming an official Missouri River detective. See you on the river.